Mr. Fitzpatrick? Can you grab that wireless mic and bring it here for a second, please? Yeah, <laughs> check, one, two, one, two, three, check, check. Okay, so keep it on. Yeah. Right back on the screen. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
recognition and good news. We have a top 16 in the world youth pre-sale football champion, uh, Chloe Leinhardt. She is. Chloe, can you come up? Chloe, would you feel comfortable speaking at the microphone, just letting the board know uh, what it means to be a to be 16th in the world in freestyle football? Thank you, I'm going to read this. 
Uh, okay, moving on to personnel and instructional. Um, if I could have a motion to approve PI1 through PI4, please. I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 4 0. And personnel non instructional. If I could have a motion to approve non instructional PNI 1 through PNI 3, please. I'll motion. And a second? All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 4 0. And that brings us to finance with Dr. Harris. Um, the first thing I want to make is agenda is the driver education contract. Um, I did give a little bit of information in reference to the switch from OJ's driving school. Um, the high school administration did a very thorough job in reaching out to about 12 different driver ed programs, and this one was the one that was willing to work with us. Um, and just be mindful as you see the contract and you see the cost per student. That it is because students are on a one-to-one -one basis when they get the car due to COVID, so the cost could change moving forward in an, in an different environment. Um, the second item is a donation for the class of 2022, um, and this is from Ms. Smith, a parent of the senior class, uh, donating to that class. We also have the 21-22 science supply bid. We do that annually so that um, information has come back for approval. Uh, the next item is in reference to lifeguard pay grades. Um, Mr. Roth sent in a request uh, a bit earlier, closer to the summertime, in reference to the uh, lifeguard pay being equal to um, scorers, timers, and ticket takers. So he's just asking um, for that to be equivalent. And then he also provides some recommendations here uh, in reference to what the current hourly rate is and what we look at to be raised to. I do want to mention that even if the board decided to do something different when it comes to that current hourly rate, in December when, officially January, when minimum wage shifts, the shift has to happen regardless to what minimum wage is. So there will be a slight increase either way. And then we have uh, subject E, which is budget transfers over 15,000. And then we have the audit. So um, I'm going to allow the audit presentation to happen because I need action on the audit as well. So I just figured it makes sense to allow that to Okay, so um, tonight from Lumsden, we have Seth Hennon, who is going to um, go through the presentation with us. Each one of you were provided the Seth's audit committee um, presentation. And it's about eight pages of the Last year there was $1.5 million, that was a substantial increase in federal funds. 
Uh, most of that was from the, the, the CARES Act, that's $112,000 which came in from the federal government, and you also got a portion of that from your county, but it's all the same fund. Uh, you also received $373,000 more in uh, school lunch funds, also as a result of the, uh, the CARES Act, as, as the OK that got increased as free meals to all students. Uh, so as a low-risk quantity, we had no findings in the previous year, so that means you're a low-risk quantity, it means we have to test at least 20% of that $2.4 million number. We tested the Child Nutrition Cluster, which is basically the school lunch federal grants, uh, $760,000, or 31%. Again, there are no findings, there are no internal control issues, so it's a clean audit, uh, just what you're looking for. Uh, data collection form is just an electronic filing of the final credit statements that will be done in the coming weeks once the audits have been approved by the board tonight. The extra classroom activity schedules are also required to be audited by New York State. That's another separate report included in the drafts. Uh, basically, the, the, the student funds is $107,000 uh, cumulative of all the different clubs. Uh, the students raised $67,700 and spent $76,000. Uh, so we do include that in the audit. And this is a point of reference, that's about 30% of what your normal activity is, so there's substantially less activity as about well similar from other districts we've audited. Uh, the last two bullet points in there are also the reports you have, but I'll go through, through those at the end of the presentation. Uh, slide number two talks about basically your fund balance. So this will be kind of the primary slide to look at. The top part of that is your general fund fund balance, and you can see kind of in the middle of the page there, it goes in 21 column. Your general fund fund balance is $9.6 million. That's a decrease of $997,000 from the previous year. Uh, primarily, the reason for that is transfers of the capital projects uh, for your district's local share. So you transfer $2.7 million in the current year. If you were to not transfer that, meaning once that project was done, uh, your general fund would have had a $1.5 million surplus or positive position. I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, the $9.6 million of fund balance, you can see there's various reserves that's in. Uh, your capital reserve is now zero. That was part of the transfer of $2.7 million. Your capital project reserve is zero. Uh, the debt service reserve is $1.8 million. It's a planned usage of $860,000 from the budget. Uh, that was net of $200,000 of funds, additional premium. It's required to go in there and it'll be spent next year. Uh, your employee benefit reserve, $1.4 million. You did use $100,000 of that. Uh, retirement contribution reserve was funded by $412,000. That is only the ERS portion. The district has not yet established a TRS reserve, so that is purely an ERS reserve at this point. And the other uh, two reserves are, are unchanged in the prior year. Uh, the assigned fund balances of about $2 million are saving for next year's budget. Then by difference of what's left is your unassigned fund balance, that's $2.6 million. That is the portion that is required to be by New York State, 4% of next year's budget. And so that $2,684 is 4% of next year's budget. Uh, one thing I would like to point out too, it seems like you're in compliance with that 4%. I, was, I would kind of stress the more important number there is the total fund balance in federal fund, the $9.6 million. And one thing to look at is kind of comparing that to your total general fund expenditures of the current year, it's about 16%. And from other districts we bonded in Western New York, generally we see between 15 to 45%. Um, there's an outliers in there, 60%. Uh, basically, keep in mind that you're on the lower end of that, so it's not really a, an issue to raise concern with, but something to definitely watch for that you don't want to see that go much lower. Uh, that's why I said as well, once you stop paying the local share of your local project, which is mostly done, uh, you should see some positives uh, in general fund. The only thing is all the uncertainties with the CARES Act and all those different federal funds that as they expire in the next couple of years, you're not really sure that's going to continue or not. So it's going to keep it on that. Uh, the next big number there is the fund balance for the capital projects fund of a $13.5 million deficit. Uh, that is normal for this, this fund. That fund accumulates large deficits as you spend funds. So you spent $15 million on the current capital project. Once you send a bond out, that will go back to being a positive fund now. So it's really just kind of on the bond based issue. Uh, your, your fund balance for your school lunch fund is a negative $849,000. I think that's something that's been talked about for a number of years. Uh, it did see a small $30,000 improvement, but it's just going the right direction now. 
Uh, and the Crown Fund bails is the special, miscellaneous special revenue fund of $173,000. Uh, there's a new accounting standards that basically it's moved uh, which fund it appears in. It's essentially your scholarships and other revenue that comes in for very specific purposes. Uh, so all told, your, your, general fund, your total fund balance for all funds is a negative $4.5 million, but that is really uh, required because of the, the capital crimes fund so big. Once you bond that, uh, you do that to be a positive. Uh, this is some extra slides here. Uh, slide 3 and 4 talk about the general fund revenues and expenditures. Uh, they're fairly consistent, but just to take a look at them quickly, you can see from those, those charts, uh, the, the property taxes is a steady increase, about 2.5%. Uh, your sales tax did jump up quite a bit. You can't see it from the, the graph up there. That's about a 13% increase in sales tax. So the sales tax did have a, a nice increase that no one was really expecting after the COVID uh, shutdown stuff happened. Uh, your state aid increased slightly. There was a lot of budget cuts from the state. Uh, the pandemic adjustment and get a kind of fish aid decrease. But because of the way the timing worked with just the 20% withholding from last year, it kind of carried over this, which so looks more flat than it really would have been otherwise. And the CARES Act, one day I mentioned 700000 is in that other category of $1.4 million, and that was offset by some other decreases in uh, refunds and interest and stuff like that. So overall, fairly consistent. Uh, your total general fund revenue is of $60.6 million. The general fund expenditures, the first two columns there are salaries and benefits. Those are the biggest two parts of any district. Uh, we were with 75% of total expenditures are, general, are uh, salaries and benefits. Uh, salaries increase 0.6%. Uh, that's really net of uh, raises, net of uh, just retirements and resignations, uh, changes in FTEs. Uh, one thing to point out is your health insurance uh, only increased 0.9%. So that's a big win over uh, previous years when it increases, you know, 5, 6, 7% a year. Uh, a little more increase 0.9%, so that was a good sign. Uh, other categories are, are fairly consistent. Uh, OC services are down $263,000, and that's just based on need and requests. There's various changes in training and teaching in all sorts of categories. Uh, but otherwise, uh, your, your total general fund expenditure is $59 million, extremely consistent in total last year. So if you were to take uh, your revenues on the last page of $60.6 million, less than $59.0, zero, that's that $1.5 million that the surplus you would have had if you didn't transfer capital project. Uh, not to talk about page 5 too much, this is where we take all the funds, kind of merge them all together. Uh, this is kind of the highlights of this page. It is the total current assets of the, of the district are 17, almost 18 million dollars. Uh, 15 million of that's cash, that's what's all account receivables. Uh, the liabilities section, uh, 56.3 million dollars versus 58.8 million dollars. So it's an increase of, sorry, decrease of $2.5 million over the previous year. Uh, that's based on you paid $3.4 million of the principal payments on your debt. You issued a small plus bond of $685,000. The other liabilities increased $13.6 million. Uh, that's because we issued a new ban, an $18.2 million ban. That's really a big reason why that capital project funds a big deficit in it. Uh, last year's ban was only uh, $5 million, so it's a $12 million increase. That's really the function of that increase. And again, once that ban gets paid off the bond, it'll be going to a positive uh, position for that one. Uh, this bottom part of page 5 is just how you reconcile between fund bases and government. I'm going to skip over that. It's really more of an accounting thing, but that's kind of the big three items that get changed from fund bases to government and why are the uh, capital assets, debt service, and all the different pensions and OPEs. Uh, that we have to go through. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the other two reports, uh, there's two reports, you have a report charge with governance. Uh, that's basically where if we have any disagreements or any arguments with management or any kind of major issues, we can tell you about it. Uh, basically, this is the very boring report because we had none of those issues. There's no disagreements, no issues. Really nothing to report out of the ordinary. Uh, it's a good audit process, so I to thank uh, Dr. Harris and her business office staff. Everything went, went pretty smoothly and uh, presented a nice clean audit report. Uh, the final slide to go through is the management letter. So this is where we have comments that can be improved upon. Uh, this can be, the big one there is the deficit fund bills and the school lunch fund. Uh, it's $850,000. Uh, it's unlikely that that 
uh, fund is really going to pay for itself, so there will be a need for the general fund to have transfer funds to it in the future. Uh, but just kind of keep an eye on it and get more uh, positive fund balance uh, going in there, which is going to 30,000 this year, just going to continue that. Uh, there's various extracurricular activity funds that's very common for districts, but we get uh, numerous comments. Most of these comments here are all from prior years, they're very similar, so nothing really uh, too big to update. The one I would point out is the capital assets, which is the last to pull it in the update uh, prior years section. Uh, right now, the policy is about $500 is the capitalization threshold, which is a very low number for a district your size, I'd recommend 5000 and so what that would do is reduce the administrative burden and just kind of, you would still track those for insurance purposes, but not for accounting purposes. It would just help um, alleviate some time and it doesn't really provide much, uh, much detail, really. Uh, if you want more details, like I said, you have the full bench letter uh, written out in paragraph form. If you have any questions, you can ask uh, either now or call us later on. You can ask later. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any What I probably will do is start with our committee to make sure our policy committee understands it and then we have a discussion with the board. It has been brought up before. Um, I think one of them able to have a sidebar with Seth in reference to how things are still tracked versus how this is tracked. I think that was the concern. Like if you go on a desk and it's not 5,000, are you still tracking that somewhere, right? It's still equipment. Good evening, everybody. Can the board see the screen okay? Excellent. So, as you know, I try to provide an update uh, each time we are together regarding COVID and how things are going in the district. As the board knows, this is a chart that has tracked the week to week net change of positive persons uh, living on Grand Island. Uh, this chart started last September. You can see the spike in October, then coming back down, and then the incredible spike all the way to uh, mid-December, and then a little bit of slide during vacation, a little jump again in January, and down and up again. And this line represents uh, everything from maybe May, June, July, and August. 
So you can see the week-to-week -week net change over the summer was very flat and almost non-existent on the island. And now, as school has started, we're starting to see just a slight uptick where this line is looking very similar to, say, this line where we were last September. So this is uh, the week-to-week -week net change. Uh, there were 2,216 people uh, on Grand Island from March of uh, from March of 2020, and then over the last week it went from 2,216 to 2,325, a net increase on Grand Island of 57. So I'll continue to show you throughout the school year. We really hope that this line here stays flat in November and December and January and so forth. So we would hate to see the line jump up like it did last December. Does anybody have any questions about this slide? Excellent. So um, this is a chart. Uh, last time we were together, I showed you from September 1st to about September 27th the number of students uh, and employees who uh, became positive with COVID in the district. Over the past 15 days, between the period of uh, September 28th to October 12th, there have been 18 persons. 17 of those persons were students and one was an employee identified as positive with COVID-19 in our school district. Once again, this is from September 28th to October 12th. This resulted in 85 people being quarantined as a result of the 18 positive cases. Of the 85, 80 were students and 5 were employees. Does anybody have any questions about that? So, to look at this from September 1st to October 12th, since the beginning of the school year, Starting September 1st, we have had a total of 34 students identified as positive with COVID-19 and 137 others quarantined since September 1st. Additionally, since the beginning of the school year, we've had five employees identified as positive and seven others quarantined. Is that clear? Any questions about that? As you know, I can share, uh, this is this is a data that's on the Erie County website. It's in PDF form. So this is since March of 2020, all of the people in Erie County uh, who have tested positive. Again, uh, from March 2020 to, uh, I think this is October 2nd. And these are age categories, uh, so you can look at it by age. And then the color coding is by gender. This is the, the chart that just looks at Erie County from September 26th to October 2nd. So there are 1,787 new cases in Erie County from 9-26 to 10 or October 2nd. And again, these are, uh, uh, dis uh, these are uh, displayed, I think this is 0 to 9, the 0 to 9 population, boys and girls, and so forth throughout the age this is a new chart that was uh, published by uh, Mark Polencars today. This is Erie County weekly students and school staff cases throughout the county since the beginning of the school year. So as of October 4th, Erie County students and staff are represented here. Uh, the, uh, I'm colorblind, so I, I'm struggling with this color, but that's the staff, and then this color are students. Whatever those numbers are, I believe you. Um, so interestingly, I think uh, from here I can't see the numbers clearly, but they're in the mid 300s uh, throughout Erie County, and then a little bit of a dip most recently. Uh, this is the same number, the 1,787, as of October 2nd. You can see at the end of August there were 1,088 cases in Erie County, and then 1,300. 1,400 and 1,500 each week, and then now at 1,700. And this is as of October 7th. Uh, so if I go back to this, as of October 2nd, there were 1,787 cases. And then as of October 7th, 
I want to make sure I'm saying that. So as of October 2nd, 1700, and then October 7th, 1800. So you can see that it's, you know, there's a steady increase in Erie County of positive cases. Each week I share with you just this graph from Erie County. This is as of October 9th, there were 146 patients in Erie County hospitals and 35 of them uh, in ICU and 23 of the 146 at airway assist. And I shared with the board uh, at the last meeting that Mr. Lurie has been working with a company called USA Medical. Uh, they had started testing uh, employees uh, based on this new mandate that employees must be tested and the only way they can opt out is if they're vaccinated and it's a weekly test. So Mr. Loria uh, worked with uh, Teresa Lizaday and uh, USA Medical is set up once a week for three hours at the Transportation Center and interested employees can go uh, from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Mr. Loria, did I get that correct? And then again, you know, according to the CDC, uh, people who are vaccinated uh, have greater than 10 times of a lower risk of hospitalization or death than those who are not vaccinated. And uh, each week I share, each board meeting I share with you the number uh, of individuals who are 20 years or older on Grand Island who are vaccinated. And this number is slowly starting to increase, and this number now is 82.4% of individuals 20 years old and older are vaccinated here on Grand Island. And uh, Jude and I and Roger Roker uh, have been working together to set up another vaccination clinic, and that vaccine clinic will be on October 25th here at the, at the Grand Island High School in the back gym. We encourage people, it's, uh, you know, just come, you don't really even need an appointment, and they'll have Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson available uh, for those interested individuals who would like to be vaccinated. And that'll be from 2, no, that'll be from, yeah, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. on October 25th. Enter in the back of the high school, and that's door 27, right? And that's the back gym. And lastly, for the board, I'd just like to share with you some photos. Uh, we really would love, I think, Jude to invite Juliana Huber to a future board meeting. Uh, she helped design, and it's very difficult to see it in this picture, but she designed the artistic uh, wall that all the seniors get to sign in the high school. She designed the whole thing, and she worked with this team of artists uh, to, to paint and decorate this sign. And then you can see this is uh, Glenn's daughter. Uh, signing uh, the wall, and all the seniors have the opportunity to do that. But these are the artists that help uh, put this together. So congratulations to all of them, and working with our student advisors. And these are just some photos. You know, you heard one of our student ambassadors talk about homecoming and the football game. It was just a beautiful event. Uh, the pep band, uh, the, the majesty of the football game, our uh, King and Queen, I guess, of homecoming, right? Tucker and Adi, just wonderful kids. And everybody who knows Grand Island has been here for a long time and understands the spirit and power of Kevin Murray's blue, white, blue, white chant uh, with the entire student body. Uh, just a fantastic uh, opportunity. These are some photos of senior night for our boys' soccer. And Mr. Antonelli and all these wonderful teachers took all of the Sidway kids on a field trip to the fire department. And here are our wonderful children uh, who got the opportunity last week to learn more about fire safety uh, right with our volunteer fire department and take a look at that really cool photo there. Excellent job. And the last bit of news for the board, as you might know, Diana Lipp, a teacher at Youth, is being recognized as the Citizen of the Year in the category of education. Uh, there will be a wonderful dinner that will be at the Double Tree Hotel in Niagara Falls. People can go to the Grand Island Chamber of Commerce website to buy a ticket for the dinner, uh, and you'll be able to uh, celebrate with Diana's wonderful um, recognition. She's been so well deserved. And that's all I have for the board. Do you have any questions? Um, I have a question about the October 25th vaccination clinic. Can you get a booster shot at that clinic as well? As 
looking at Jude and Nash, sure.
kudos to you and uh, all the staff here. Um, and also for the high school staff and everyone involved in homecoming, uh, putting together, going above and beyond, put together a wonderful week uh, for the kids. So it's great to see that. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to all the classes that um, made cards and new booklets. Um, this is Schroeder's class for uh, Board of Education Recognition Week. And thank everyone that's serving on the board uh, for your time and your volunteerism. It's greatly appreciated. Um, this is Mrs. Uh, Mrs. 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 And all the students did a great job with their artwork, and it's very much appreciated. Thank you, you for the cookies. We love the cookies, and we never need some of the cool. So, um, homecoming went off without a hitch. It was wonderful. It was so great to see all the kids um, celebrating and outside for the dance and be able to um, enjoy themselves and, and have some normalcy. I just want to say personally to Mark your calendars for October 25th if you have a child that's 12 and older and um, they need to get vaccinated. Please take advantage. Um, as Dr. Graham said, no appointments are necessary. You can walk in back door of the high school between 2 and 6 and um, get your uh, vaccine. That's all. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. McSnally for the tour today. It was very informative and also thank you to the students who made um, the card for us. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the walk out to uh, see this today. So thank you. Sorry. Um, no, I just want to say thank you to all the faculty, staff, advisors, administrators, uh, teachers, community, who made one more happen. <laughs> and then maybe see it back to what it was after a couple years of the last struggle. So thank you for doing that. Um, it's awesome to see Yeah, 
Well, I just, I just want to be clear because I know that the government budget it could change, right? Yes. So that's another thing. It could change. I do feel that while we have the SERSA funds, which is the extra federal dollars, that the UPK program that's being pushed out will still be there. The question is, once those funds are gone from the state and from school districts, how how do these pots of money look? I think it's going to be hard for them to take that away, but we know that they will fund one area and produce others, so it's just hoping for some stability there. But um, if anything changes in reference to, you know, we go to financial meetings all the time, if anything changes, I'll be sure to the foundation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, our new school production of Lion King Jr. is coming up. I believe it's October 22nd, 23rd. Just a big thank you to Mrs. Russo, Mr. Warren, and Mrs. Trooper Rogers for all their work. And it'll be great to see Lion King Jr. in person in the auditorium. So kudos to all of them. And uh, another thank you to Mr. Antonelli, Ms. Judy Kuhn, and Mark Gordon for the work they did today to put this on. So it took uh, several hours this afternoon to hook up the sound and uh, to get all the technology ready. So thank you, Mark, Jude, and Mr. Antonelli. And then as uh, Ashley shared with everybody, it is Board of Education recognition. We're very, very proud of our Board of Education. Uh, I think sometimes people think they get paid. They do not get paid. It's volunteer time. It's, it's from their heart that they are here. They were here at 6.30, uh, so on Sundays long nights they're putting in multiple hours in person and then multiple, multiple hours reading all of the backup that's included in the board book, the board agenda, the memos that I send them. So we can't thank them enough for their unending uh, dedication uh, to our students and their parents and all faculty and staff. So let's give our board of education a big round of applause. Thank you, everybody. That's all we have. Thank you. Um, just a couple of dates to remember. November 8th, we have a board of education meeting at Hughes Road Elementary School. And November 22nd, we will have a board of education meeting um, in the professional development room in the high school. Um, with that, I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at um, 8.32 p.m. In the second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any extensions? Motion carried 4-0. Good night, everyone.